do a brief summary of the graphical approach to solving absolute value equations. Now, the first thing of importance is understanding the symbol absolute value. And that absolute value implies the distance between two numbers. So since there is not a second number written there, we can, or a second term written, we can rewrite this as the absolute value of x minus 0 equals 4. And that would mean the distance from 0 to x is 4 units. Okay? So remember, absolute value is distance from, then we'll have one number to another, and it will be equal to a constant. So let's look at an example. So we have the absolute value of x equals 1. Or again, that can be written as the absolute value of x minus 0 equals 1. So if I'm to say that in a verbal description, the distance from 0 to x, my solution, is 1 unit. So graphically solving that, I would start at 0 because the distance from 0 to my answer is 1 unit. So I would move 1 unit to the right and 1 unit to the left. And what would happen is then I would find my two solutions that make this correct. So it would be x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. Now that might seem kind of obvious, but let's look at a problem where we are not beginning at the value 0. So I'm going to go through a slide there. Here we have the absolute value of x minus 3 equals 1. Well, again, this would be described as the distance from 3 to x, or from 3 to my solution, is 1 unit. So I would start at 3, and the distance from 3 to my solution is 1 unit. So I'm going to move 1 to the right, 1 to the left, and so I'm going to have a result of 4 and 2. Those would be my two solutions to this problem. Now, remember, you can always check it. So if I did a quick check, does the absolute value of 2 minus 3 equal 1? Well, yes, it does. And does the absolute value of 4 minus 3 equal 1? Yes, it does. We've found it. Okay? Now, this is the graphical approach. Remember, we'll talk about the algebraic approach in just a minute. Now, the quantity absolute value of x plus 2 equals 4. Now, you notice this is written a little differently because up to this point, whenever you take absolute value, it's been written as subtraction. Because this phrase here, distance from, another way of expressing that is the difference between. So the formula, or the generalization for absolute value, is generally written, that's why it's generalization, as a subtraction problem. So can we rewrite x plus 2 so it's subtraction? Well, yes, without changing the value, it would be x minus a negative 2, because that has the same meaning as x plus 2. Now we can use that to write a verbal description. The distance from negative 2 to my answer x is 4 units. So I would start at negative 2, and I would move 4 units to the right and 4 units to the left, and I would end up at a solution of 2 and a solution of negative 6. Now remember, you can always check these answers to make sure that they are correct. Okay? Now let me bridge this to the algebraic approach. These are examples that you did. And... I'm going to go through a few of them. <laughs> I am here. Oh, one more. There we go. This is what I wanted. I wanted to write down the process. Now, what would be the process if I wanted to use an algebraic approach? Now, let's say I'm given the example 3 times the absolute value of x plus 1 equals 12. So this is the given. Well, always an absolute value, the first thing you need to do is you need to isolate the absolute value expression. Now, the previous example, it was already isolated. But in this example, I'm going to have to divide by 3 first. Isolate the absolute value expression. Okay, so we'll divide both sides by 3. And we will end up with the quantity of the absolute value of x plus 1 equal to 4. Fantastic. Now, I'm used to solving this graphically. And graphically, because we would always, generally we think of it as difference, this can be written as x minus negative 1 equals 4. We would start at negative 1, and then we would move 4 units to the right, 4 units to the left, and we would find our solutions at 3 and negative 5. Now let's connect this to an algebraic process. So we notice that always, when I graph it, I have to move 4 units to the right and 4 units to the left. So how we can represent that algebraically is the x plus 1 stays the same. I still want to find the difference between x and negative 1. So 
but I'm going to move four units to the right, and then I'm going to move four units to the left. And that's how I represent that graphical move. So to describe that, we are going to write two expressions, two equations, excuse me. Okay. Now remember, when you write your two equations, the absolute value quantity, or an absolute value expression, that will stay the same. Okay. However, the constant, we want to represent moving to the right and the left, so the constant will be represented as a positive and a negative. Okay? Now my last step for the algebraic approach is then I solve for x. So I subtract 1 from both sides, and I would get x equals 3. Subtract 1, x equals negative 5. And now you'll notice the answers I got here in the algebraic approach match the answers I got in the graphical approach. So you should be able to verbally describe an absolute value equation. You should be able to graphically solve it and algebraically solve it also.